Hey everybody, it's your pal Mike Zombie, and this week we're going to talk about Dawn of the Dead 2004. Yeah, the remake, and in fact, I went and saw this opening, to see, <laughs> like some nerds, when like a new Warcraft expansion comes out, they take the day off of work and they play it all day. I took the day off of work when Dawn of the Dead was released, and I went and saw it that afternoon, and I was so fucking excited that I went home, ate, grabbed some friends, and came back, and we watched it again. Now, some ground rules about this review. Most people I run into, talk to, you know, if a zombie movie conversation comes up, usually um, we'll discuss Romero and so forth, but someone brings up Dawn of the Dead 2004, and it's always said that it's a remake. I've, I think I've mentioned before that I honestly, in my heart, don't believe this is a remake. I think it's a whole new imagining of a story we already know. I mean, granted, part of the story is in every zombie movie you've ever seen, but it pretty much started here. Aside from the name and the concept of most of the action taking place inside of a mall and zombies, this movie is very different from its 1978 namesake. I would put both this and the original into my top 10, without a doubt, and a lot of people I talk to feel the same. So over the course of the day, I had a bit of a chat with McPierce and Misfit Boy about this film, and all three of us love it. We absolutely do. Most people, like I said, I run into, this comes up when we talk about zombie movies, and everybody tends to love it. And I get excited when I bump into somebody who doesn't know there was a 78, but they go, man, Dawn of the Dead was awesome. I go, yeah, right? And so I get to tell them, hey, man, let me take you back old school. <laughs> Let me take you back in the Wayback Machine to 1978. Anyway, I don't view this to be a straight-up remake. I think it's kind of a retelling. It keeps a lot of what made the first one so awesome, the giant monument to consumerism. Basically, Anna, played by Sarah Pauly, is a nurse, and she gets off work, and she goes home, and she's spending some quality time with the husband, and they fall asleep. That's like any other night until they wake up because the neighbor's girl, for some reason, has wandered into their house and they're like, are you OK? And the little girl comes over to the guy. He kind of picks her up a little bit and she just bites the shit out of his neck because she's a zombie. You know, in that haze when you wake up and shit doesn't make sense, but you get that bolt of adrenaline and you're kind of you know, running forward, that's what happens to pretty much everybody. So suddenly she's got a bit of a crisis. This little girl has, I guess, bit the jugular of her husband in half and he's dying big time i mean this shit is on so suddenly husband's gone little girl in the house is crazy and a zombie she doesn't quite understand and she gets into the bathroom and suddenly her husband is in a rage and bashing through the door and this isn't a nightmare because she, she she can't wake up and she gets she flies out the window falls gets to her car and the husband comes out and he's just trying to kill her and the neighbors are freaking out and they're trying to kill her and everybody's running around zombified and we're talking fast zombies which many of you might credit to 28 days later but that style of zombie running its ass off and that would be a big difference between 78 and 2004 you know the zombies in 78 were scary because they were fixtures that could kill you <laughs> that were trying to kill you but they were slow now, these zombies at least the fresh ones will fucking keep right up with you maybe even outrun you that's a scary thought. And then we're treated to what I do believe to be the best cinematic intro of all time, where they start the titles. And along with it, we get the explanation from the government, which is basically like the press secretary saying, we don't know. How's it spread? We don't know. How do we stop it? We don't know. And this was made in 2003, so you know, not too far after 2001. And they show some interesting scenes. They kind of weave with the zombie apocalypse, civil unrest, rioting. I mean, things we might expect in, this, in, in a time such as this, but they weave in religion and people praying. And they have shots of Muslims praying towards Mecca. The way it was shot and the way they showed it, I kind of sat back because I really hadn't looked that far into Islam to understand a lot about it. I knew they prayed, you know, uh, but I, I didn't quite understand uh, the Quran and so forth. It was interesting for me to see, and they're cutting in and out of footage of the virus, and it kind of gives us the background. But what I what's really great about this is the soundtrack is Johnny Cash singing When the Man Comes Around, which is a fucking amazing song. If you've never heard it, you definitely need to, well, you if, if you're a Johnny Cash fan, you've heard it along with several other hundreds of songs that he's done. 
Uh, but if you've not heard it, you need to hear it even aside from this film. It's a really great song. It's really, uh, it really kind of get your blood going, and it certainly does in this case. The intro kind of ends with like the helicopter on the White House lawn. They're trying to evacuate the president, and suddenly zombies are showing up. Zack Snyder, the director, is one of the guys with the machine gun shooting the zombies down in front of the helicopter. And by the way, this was Zack Snyder's directorial debut. Holy shit, are you kidding me? This is the first thing you get. <laughs> I mean, this thing grossed, I think, $25 million opening weekend. That was almost what it cost to make the fucking movie. This was his first shot before he went on to do 300 and a bunch of other stuff. Uh, this was his debut. What a great job he did. So the intro was just perfect. My favorite of any movie of all time. We pick back up because Anna has crashed. I want to call her Sarah, Sarah Polly. Um, she's crashed her car and she's kind of unconscious and woken up by a large, scary policeman who I think was in a movie I saw the other day headed towards Catalina Island. No, it's Ving Rhames. Not as funny as he was in the other film. He kind of takes her and some other survivors, and they're just trying to get off the road. And they go to the mall because it's right next door, right across the way with a big inviting parking lot and great big doors. And sure enough, rent cops are apparently kings for a day. And these movies kind of imply that when everything goes to shit, there's going to be hierarchy based on who's tough, who's not. I mean, the meek shall inherit the shit, apparently. And suddenly we're forced to put a value on life. And we're forced to find out the, the value of the dead or non-value, potentially. But what cracks me up is that, you know, it puts us in the situation where we really should value life and people anyway regardless of the apocalypse but the security guards are in charge and they're locking everybody up and they're calling them around like cattle because they're afraid and they're headed by cj who's a real fucking prick and we don't like him right away he's snarky he's heavy-handed he's i don't know it's his way of the fucking highway and these people are thinking my god my life rests in the hands of some motherfucker who barely passed high school potentially and just got his firearm and his guard card and you know now he's working at the fucking mall this starts the film really i'm sure most of you have seen it and if you haven't i'm not going to ruin it but this movie quickly becomes the fight for survival against those outside the fight for supremacy or equality to those inside and the fight to keep hope because there's not much hope to be had strangely they find a leader among themselves michael who is played by jake weber i mean we've got a cast and crew of cops kind of hard-ass street guys <laughs> zombie farmers messaging me on my phone <laughs> that's funny shit that's like twice now you know rich assholes and the one who the one who rises the occasion the moment the level head is the every guy he's a salesman <laughs> that's what he does he's just that kind of guy but he keeps it together and these people start to bond and sure enough they end up bonding with 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 the security guards and we kind of become one big dysfunctional family out of necessity now these people probably never would have even talked much to each other outside of this apocalypse but now they're going to because they may be all that's left but wait we've got a guy across the way a gun dealer he's on the roof and between the mall and this place there's a good you know a city block and thousands of zombies in between so uh, the only way they can communicate is with signs and that's kind of a neat little thing that um, wasn't anywhere near the first one that I did like the movie becomes not just a fight for survival um, and yes the mall is like the fort and we did lose that fort in 78 but that that would have been too predictable for this film these folks want a little bit more and they're, they're not quite so content just to hang out i mean uh they're eventually gonna move on along the way we've gained love we've lost friends we've been treated to some really excellent gore and the whole goal in the end is to get down to the marina so we can you know sail off into the apocalypse and maybe they do maybe they don't but i'll tell you what it's going to be one hell of a fight and a ride the whole way to get there i'm going to incorporate some of the conversation i had today mcpierce loved this movie just like i do and he he very much appreciated the realism you know the the interaction of these people that this would be what we would do and that it was a lot more real than a lot of the other stuff we've seen and i i agree and I'm not sure if it's the if it was the budget or the writing, but the casting of this film was fantastic. 
fantastic. It really was. And I mentioned that I was kind of rubbed the wrong way. Mikai Pfeiffer plays Andre, and him and his wife are there, and she's she's just damn near about to give birth when they show up. You know, of course, because two things that don't take everybody else's needs or wants into account, and that's childbirth or an apocalypse. They kind of had their own calendar. He had a, several weird interactions with Ving Rhames, and I I didn't, it, it rubbed me the wrong way. It seemed forced. Uh, some of it was kind of religious. Some of it was kind of just um, ethnic and just, I don't know. And it just rubbed me the wrong way, though uh, Mikai Pfeiffer was, was, I mean, he did a great job. It's just that his character bugged me for whatever reason. Other than that, well, including that, it was it was a great cast. Uh, now, those of you <laughs> who are old enough to remember my childhood, I won't give that away. Um, Matt Frewer is in it. He's got a small part in this film. We do well, and I won't give too much away about him. But you'll remember him as Max Headroom. Well, the writing was very good. The special effects were good. The special effects were fucking great. Everybody did a great job acting. Our hearts break for some of these people. We're shocked by some of the actions of others. And of course, <laughs> our enemy becomes our friend. And so, sometimes that really pisses me off in a movie, but in this one, it was right. I'm just going to say, uh, we end up really, really appreciating uh, CJ, or Michael Kelly, the lead security guard. Um, he's still a prick, but you know what? In the end, we realize we wouldn't have him any other way. And we certainly love Michael slash Jake Weber and everybody else. But it's a long, fun ride and a movie, a movie you should see anyway. Everybody loves it, except I'm gonna fuck it. I'm gonna drop names. I know one guy who doesn't like this film. And that's Vaughn. <laughs> we were talking about it on the Zombie Mob, and he was like, "Eh." And I'm thinking, the fuck, Vaughn? What are you? What are you, un-American? I, oh, hold on. Maybe I should say this, Comrade Vaughn. Your dislike of this film is appropriate. <laughs> I don't know. That's okay. Because you know what? Vaughn has turned me on to a handful of really awesome films and I, that I really enjoy. And he introduced me to Wild Zero and Guitar Wolf. Vaughn, I'll always owe you for that because I, I love both now. So um, we could uh, we can disagree on one little film. That's all right. Most everybody finds something to like about this film. And um, it's certainly worth your time. Dawn of the Dead, 2004. And, yeah, I'm sorry that I didn't just totally trash it and tell you the whole story. Because if you haven't seen it, I really want you to. I want to just tell you just enough to get you in the door. I'm trying to think. I have to pre-record this all, obviously. I don't do it live or after you've heard it. So let me say welcome back to Misfit Boy. Yay! It's good to have you back, buddy. We have. Uh, I've been craving some getting into the zone. I uh, love the old Twilight Zone, so it's uh, good to hear you go over them. And uh, sometimes I'll, I'll I have I have them all, so uh, sometimes I'll watch them after I, you get the review, and I go, "This fit boy's absolutely right." So, anyways, I have no idea what I'm doing next week, but it's good to have the family back together. So, anyways, take care. We'll see you next week. Bye. <laughs>